all online today. Uh, for some reason, oh, Mackenzie just turned into a still image. And Amy as well, because Amy does not have a webcam. Is that the case? Anyway, uh, hopefully, Mackenzie, were you the one that has to or will not be here next week? Uh, yes, but my partner okay. will be there, so hopefully it's okay if I Skype in. It is okay, yes. I was, I was going to say that everybody will be here next week, and we will be making roommate assignments. Okay. Some of you are going to be in a group of four, by the way, but I'm just going to... Everybody except for Mackenzie, probably. I don't know. But uh, Mackenzie has an excused absence, but everybody else, like people are traveling from far off for the presentations. And there's going to be Italian food of some kind. Uh, that, you know what? We maybe drinks and stuff. Oh, okay. So two of us will not be here. Okay, what I would like you to do before next week is send me your preference for a roommate and then we'll see what we can do, okay? I'm assuming that the person you're presenting with would be a good choice for me. I mean, a couple of you guys usually arrive in pairs anyway, so I'm going to sort of do it that way, but send me a preference if you have one, okay? How about that? Is that better? Then you can see my double chip. Okay. Any questions about next week? You guys know what's going to happen. I believe everybody has signed up for a topic. We'll all be presenting from three to five minutes. Jenna doesn't know what we're talking about. Okay. What should we have you do? So what you need to do is on the website and get on this. The website is byuitaly2013.tumblr.com and what you should do day four. so all there's only seven days in this class and so if you need to know what happened on a particular date or day go ahead and click on this menu so where did I put here we go so Jenna, you can choose from any one of these topics that has not already been chosen, like Il Palio, or La Storia di Siena, or Torre di Mangia. Santa Caterina di Siena, La Passeggiata, La Pesa, La Bella Figura. Hey, somebody was going to do that before. Lexi, you guys are deciding. Okay, well, you're going to have to fight with Jenna. So, does that mean we have an uneven? Does anybody still not have a presentation partner? Does anybody I don't know what to do about that. Uh, Jenna, what do you think about doing a presentation, a three to five minute presentation next week by yourself? Okay. So, pick your poison, and uh, we'll understand you only have a week to do it. Won't judge you. Okay, so I'm looking forward to that. I don't know who else is going to be here, but uh, we'll party. I'm hoping to have pizza here. I don't want to promise anything. Buona festa. Oh, you know what? The religion of pizza is now available. Why do I say religion of pizza? Why don't I just say pizza, gelato, pasta? Perché è una religione. That's why. Okay. These little notes at the bottom, we haven't really gone over these. Sometimes it's... Okay, usually when you're giving a presentation in class, the hard part is not stretching it out to be three minutes or five minutes, but it's going way over because you, got, you did a lot of research. Maybe a crinkling sound. It's throwing me off my game. <laughs> Perhaps it's Sarah. Brittany does not have a partner. Uh, maybe. 
Would you like a partner, Brittany and Jenna? Would you like to split the workload? Sure. Brittany, what do you think about that? Okay, why don't, why don't you and Jenna present together? Uh, I will, let's see, you guys don't have a way to get a hold of, hi, Janessa. I will send you guys each other's email, and you can talk about that, okay? Fantastic. Yeah, Brittany, I didn't see your name on there, did I? All right, so yeah, hopefully next week we can we will have known each other good enough to know who we want to be a roommate with. And last week, so next time we're really going to meet as a group before we meet up in Rome at Fiumicino Airport. Yes, Morgan. I suppose so. Let me look for... I mean, I don't want to show my emails to everybody, but let's see, registrar. Okay, let's do this. Oh, people are sending me roommate requests. That's good. Let me see if I can get the full list here. Okay. Okay, Italian 101. I already knew that. The visual arts classes that I will be teaching are under VAGD, Visual Arts Graphic Design. And they are 498. Actually, one of them is under VAGD. 498R. Here. Let's, let's do this. That's right. Let's put them on the website, but if you are, how can we do this? Watch this. You guys know this trick. So for those of you who are not with us today, our remote students, if you could get on the, let's see, how is this going to work? I don't even know how this is going to work. I'm going to have to get back with you guys on how you guys are going to register. Because it's not their evening school. Uh, it's been done before, though. So stay tuned, non-BOU students. You guys didn't have trouble registering for this class, though. So you might be able to get on to do it. OK, but the classes are the Italian classes. The religion class is called Religion C350R. The required class that I'll be teaching, European Fine Arts, is called FN Art 270R. Italian religion. Oh, and uh, IHUM is not on here. I guess they're still perusing the syllabus. And, okay. the cooking and the cooking internship is School of SFL 399 or something like that. Yeah, it, it, there's a special section for you guys. Wait, so are the highlighted ones required? The highlighted ones are the ones that I am personally oh. teaching. Yeah, this is, remember, this is my personal email box. It's behind the scenes. Is there going to be a time for going to be a possible? No, that shouldn't happen. I mean, they, the Dante works around us. They're very accommodating. I was telling Jenna earlier, you will take an aptitude test. Did you do an aptitude Italian test when you got there? I've been told that they're going to do an aptitude test to place a placement. It's probably really quick. They probably throw something really fast in your face, and if you panic, then they put you in one. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's going to be uh, a placement <laughs> test. I'm just making that up. I don't know how what the test is going to be, but there will be a placement mechanism. <laughs> They're going to swear at you in Italian. No, register for the one that you think. This probably won't ever change, but at the Dante, what happens? No. I would register for 321. Yep. <laughs> what else do I need to say? So, Wait, so sorry, are there required classes that you have to teach? There are. The ones? No. Nope. I, sorry. Yeah, the highlighted ones are just the ones that I'm teaching. Okay. You have to take an Italian class, you yeah. have to take IHUM. Humanities. <laughs> and why am I blinking? Who was it? Oh, do we have booklets? 
Manager. Sorry, uh, we will get those too, because I would very much like you to read those. Is Mary coming later? I just thought so, but. Yeah, you want to throw her text? Okay. What am looking for? Yeah. What's the third required class that I'm forgetting? Religion is not. Oh, it's the, uh, it's the fine arts. Fine arts 270. Fine arts 270, humanities, and Italian. My class. That is what I was getting at. It's not quite up yet. That's that and I guess everything else is there. Uh, the cooking internship. You know what? Let me give you the exact number because it should be listed. Here's my forms. Post forms. I need to memorize these numbers. Okay, the number is 399R, cooking course slash internship with your host, Nando, the Napoli. It's Nando's last name, can't remember. I thought you did have an approved application. Who else has tried to add the cooking internship successfully? What does it tell you? It's just not there yet? Okay, maybe they haven't gotten around to it. It takes a long time. These forms that I have to go through like three people's desks. So that's not there. Humanities and cooking internship are not there is what I am to understand. Okay, do you guys need to know the exact number of humanities? 201. Yeah, it's IHUM 201. Finance 270. I don't think, let's see, I hear is three. No, because I mean, if you, okay, Italian is, here it's four. It's, it's ten. It shouldn't be over twelve. I mean, t cooking internship is how many credits, did I say? It is two, so yeah, that would be twelve. You should be good. You can take, what happens if you take more than twelve? I don't know. Any other hands that I missed? You got to maintain. Most of the university scholarship, they required to take 14, but on a study abroad, 12 is the, the cost. Everything's different when you're on study abroad. It's like a magical world. It's an alternative universe with delicious food and golden rooftops. So, okay. Yeah, I, I can send out a, a notice. Yeah, that's kind of, that's too bad. I'm hoping by next week the humanities and the cooking internship will be available because they have highly recommended, they have asked me to ask you to sign up for all your classes before you leave for the spring and summer before you forget about this sort. Okay. Yes, Brittany, I will be putting the course numbers on the website. And Sarah, 12 credits. All right. And, yeah. Before we do a quiz, should we do something happy? happy? Before we do the quiz, should, should I read you a story from the storybook? If you're looking for a concise little book on Italian culture, there's this book by Luis Fili called Italianissimo, which means very, very Italian. Let's read a couple things. So, is anybody doing the report on La Bella Figura? I forget if anybody signed up for that. Nobody signed up for that, because it's kind of mysterious. What is La Bella Figura? Yeah, this will be fun, because I can do this. La Bella Figura 
is looking good, being cool, striking a, not a pose, striking, what do you say? She strikes a elegant figure. You could say that. Fare la bella figura. And the opposite of facendo la bella figura is facendo la brutta figura. Non voglio fare la brutta figura, you might hear in Italy. I don't want to cut a, an ugly figure. The translations never work. There's no direct translation. Well, literally there is. Beautiful figure. The beautiful figure. I want to make a beautiful figure, or I do not want to make an ugly, the ugly figure. Doesn't translate, literally. Okay. The unspoken, this, this concept, she says, is not easily grasped outside of Italy. This picture is kind of awesome. Because you have this lady walking by. This is from like the early 60s, I believe. This lady walking by. This is awesome dress. And look at what the other girl's doing. She's looking back. Here you are. She is making la bella figura, and she is a victim of la bella figura. Making la bruta figura. So it's this concept that we don't really have. We, we want to look good here in America, right? But they really look good. They don't just want to look good, they do it. They do it. I predict that all of you will start dressing differently when you come back. Well, probably when you're there, but when you come back. I know I did. Okay, the unspoken understanding that appearance and behavior are taken into consideration by the world at large as part of the basic fabric of Italian tradition. Cosa penserà? What will the people think? Bella figura is not only about looking good and using the right form, but encompasses inherent dignity and the awareness that certain circumstances require certain behavior. The alta società enrobed in the fashion of the season, the housewife who makes sure their neighbors know that her floors are washed daily, the stonemason who goes for coffee with polished shoes and a pressed shirt, the farmer who gives his best food to the sheep shears so that word of his generosity will spread. It's not just fashion, it's everything about you. Are you a gentleman? Are you a lady? Do you have style? Do you have class? Public life historically took place in the piazzas, and therefore it was not unusual for two Italians to know each other for years without ever being invited to the other's home, making it possible to present oneself as desired. They couldn't see your messy house. Because college tuition is free, most Italians have no need to put their money in the bank, preferring instead to spend it for their own immediate gratification, and for those, hopefully, who will be looking. Did you guys see this picture? Okay, what else is my favorite? Okay, let's talk about this, because we haven't really talked about it yet. You guys know how when there's a movie or there is a popular restaurant or Zuka Juice or Jamba Juice during lunchtime, there's a long line, right? And it's a pretty orderly line, and it's usually one or two people deep, stretches around Disneyland, there's lines. The concept of waiting in a line is a foreign one to our beloved Italian people. It's not easy for them to do. Fare la coda, waiting in line. For Italians, the concept of waiting in line is tedious and boring. The etiquette of waiting has no place in their lives. Here's the accompanying. <laughs> Pretty accurate. This is the picture from my mission. I'm just kidding. I didn't go on my mission in the 50s. In other cultures, a queue is a straight ordered system, but la coda, which means literally tail, runs counter to the Mediterranean sense of libertà. It's more like a football huddle. The Italian line is a product of not only a natural desire to be first, but a curiosity about other people's business. The fact is, if one has to wait, it might as well be entertaining, or at least informative. Because lines as we know them are non-existent in Italy, when walking into a crowded shop, one is obliged to call into the throng, chi è l'ultimo? Who is the last? Nevertheless, beware of the slow, subtle weave forward. A well-practiced perpetrator will even convince himself that he was there before you. Of late, some modern-minded shopkeepers have taken the bold step to install a take-a-number machine to the consternation of many. After all, jiggling into a line can be an excuse for a conversation, a commentary, or just to let off steam. All infinitely more rewarding than simply waiting one turn. Waiting one's turn. I was just in JFK that week that you guys taught, uh -huh. week two, and there's lots of Italians going through there. It's pretty
pretty awesome if you want to practice your skills. Just go to JFK. And I was talking to a student in line. It was a one or two person wide line. We were waiting to get into the security line, and I heard Italian behind me, and I turned to talk to the student, and when I turned around, this couple was in front of us in line. It was a very narrow line. I'm not sure how they sidled by us, but uh, they didn't need to be looked twice. And you know what? I decided not to say anything because they didn't know that they'd done anything wrong, even though it was a line this long, and they had to do that. Anyway, just be prepared. Don't be shocked, and just know that it's evidently a documented cultural phenomenon. Okay? Did you find that to be the case, Janessa? Yeah. On the road in the, in Venice, when you're trying to cram onto a vaporetto, a wall bus, and there's no more room on the bus, and so there's a hundred people lined up trying to squeeze onto it. Someone will be at the very back. I I remember a lady at the very, very back of this group of 50 people trying to climb onto the vaporetto, just shouting, permesso, and trying to literally just <coughs> plow her way through, as if everyone in front of her did not have to also be on the bus. Anyway, cultural differences. They're not wrong. They're just different. Believe that? The more you believe it, the better your experience will be. I'm not going to plug that in. Okay, that's enough fun and games. We need to talk about Siena and its history. We need to have a quiz. Hopefully you have a device with which to take the quiz. Because it's online. And I will put the link up right now. Siena quiz. Let's see, there's quiz two. Let's see, do you guys have any questions before we take the quiz about Siena? I'll try to answer them if they're not on the quiz exactly in the form that you ask them. Questions about the reading? It's on the reading. It's about those three links. Let me... Okay, you guys ready? Look how easy it is to add a link to our class with a page. Why don't I put the link up ahead of time, you might ask? Because Google, that's why. I know that's a risk even in class, but come on. Honor code, people. Okay, if you go to day six on the class website and refresh it, you should see a link appear. We'll have a quiz on it. And then after you are done, we will discuss. You're taking it on your phone, at least. Is it working? Okay. <laughs>
needs more time.
still needs time in here. A couple need time. Have a few more minutes. Can you show me which quiz answers are yours from last time? I might. I didn't have the main one last week, so do you recognize any of these numbers? Maybe this one. Um, uh, answers, I should say. It goes this way. Yeah. So you recognize your It's a grand ringtone. <laughs> Am I doing this first time? First time. So you didn't you don't remember responding to it? I don't think I do because I'm in the for summer. So I thought I was in a rush looks like I'm gonna take tests. I'm gonna put your name there as a placeholder. Okay, Morgan. Morgan M. Morgan Mackey. We're gonna have to come up with nicknames. Like MM38. <laughs> something. Something. Okay, maybe you recognize this answer. That looks like it. You this? No. I didn't do it as I Are you in 102? Yeah, I'm in 102. So it's either this one. It's oh, that is it one. this one? Yeah, okay. that's it. Thanks. <laughs> that means Elise's. <laughs> so are you the only two that are in 102? Okay, so the other one's yours, Elise. <laughs> Okay. 
My seven-year-old Elise is going to love another Elise in the program. What about Morgan A? Can you come up here real quick? I thought you know. about what? In the last question, it's about taking the class in Vegas. There? Yep. Sweet. Thanks. Morgan A. Kim, do you remember what you put for the language question? No, I just remember what I said. You can have the other video. Okay. So, <laughs> I remember that. So if you know which one that is. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing that. Hold on. Let's see it. Is it oh, yay for Italy? Oh, or is yeah. It? Nope, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Row 12. Let's see. Jenna hasn't taken it yet. What about Angela? What would you have put for the Italian lessons one? Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, you know what? There's many people that said that. Dang it. Do you want to come take a look? So for those of you who didn't hear me say at the beginning, quiz number one, I didn't put names on, so I don't have anybody's name attached to their <laughs> answers. Um, yeah. Okay. This is a question. Okay, yeah, that would help. So there's one. Narrow it down, maybe. Gothic slash. I just put this in teens. So maybe one of these. Oh. No, so you'd say Byzantine and your own. So that's good. Oh, you can't even see it, can you? Where'd it go? Uh, who is taking Italian at Granite Peaks Continuing Education? Yeah, let's do it that way. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, Amy, that's you, okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to try to hurry up. Uh, I want you to get the credit you deserve. <laughs> there might be a curve. I don't know. I think there should be a curve. <laughs> Okay, who said Rosetta Stone and my friend who served her mission in Milan, Italy? Brittany? In la cara. What about... All right, we're getting close here. Oh, uh, Rosetta Stone, Italian couple giving me Italian lessons over the summer in Arizona. That's me. That's you, Sarah. Oops. Okay, this is easier detective work than I thought. Okay, what about Rosetta Stone and Italian 101 in spring? Does that apply to anybody? Is that you, Lexi? The rest of these are going to be a little bit tricky. Okay. Uh, Pimsler, audiobooks in Italian, Italian dictionary, guessed Byzantine correctly. Maybe Trista. Uh, Pimsler, audiobooks in Italian, and an Italian dictionary. 
Let's see. Yeah, I don't know of any other unique way to dis distinguish this. Correctly guessed that the country we now know as Italy is older than the United States. False. Does that sound like you, Trista? Should we pencil you in? No. No? Wait, because you're enrolled this semester. Yeah, see. I, have, I am currently enrolled in 101, I am currently in Italian 101, and I am enrolled this semester. <laughs> All right, how about before you leave the class, we come up here and take a look at these answers? Okay, just to not spend too much more time on it. All right, is everybody done that has taken the quiz today that's listening to the sound of my voice? Sarah, Amy, Mackenzie, and Brittany are all done. Okay, everybody in here is done? All right. Let's do this. Let us go over the answers. Let's see. Hopefully everybody got number one right. Who is the saint most closely linked with Siena? Chelsea. Santa Caterina. Saint Catherine. Catherine or Saint Kate. <laughs> saint would not be correct because there's thousands. Saint Catherine is the correct answer. Uh, Piazza del Campo looks like a giant brick seashell. Very good, Morgan. That's, that comes up in every description of Piazza del Campo. Assomiglia, sembra un... Oh, I don't forget how to say seashell. I'm going to have to look that one up. Someone look it up quick. What do the nine travertine strips or divisions of Il Campo memorialize? Government of the Nine, 1292 to 1355. Very important in Siena, the governors. Now, conquillas, yes, conquillas. Now we all know. The Government of the Nine, word is that they could never leave the building when they were judged, except for public holidays. They were always in that Palazzo Publico. They were always in their building. And there's the painting. You guys will see the painting. Awesome. I'm excited. What's the name of the fountain in Piazza del Campo, and who designed it, Elise? Uh, it's Jacopo della Quercia. Fonte Gaia. Very good. Fonte Gaia. You guys get that one right? What about Mackenzie? Did you get that one right? Very good. <laughs> Sarah, that's okay. Uh, okay. Hey, let's do this. This will all know if you guys are trying to get my attention. There we go. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, there you go. I will not count spelling against you. Which building in the Piazza del Campo is the focus of Siena's civic life and now houses art by some of the greatest Italian artists of the 13th and 14th? centuries. Uh, let's see, we skipped over Morgan Allison. Piazza dei Salimbeni. It's actually Palazzo Publico. The public palace or apartment <laughs> building. Palazzo Publico. Okay, that is the main building in Siena. All right, uh, Kim. Torre di Mangia, is it the second tallest tower in Italy? It actually is. <laughs> it is the second tallest tower. I, you know what, I don't even know. It's the huge tall one that's attached to the Palazzo Publico. Quick, somebody tell me what the tallest tower in Italy is. I should have known that. All I know is Siena right now, though. Your brain can only hold so many facts. Okay, how many contrade are there in Siena? Do you know, Jenna? 17! 17! Everybody say, ci sono 17 contrade a Siena! Very good. Molto bene. 
I think it's cool how Mackenzie becomes a still image if she doesn't make any noise. <laughs> Is that going to happen in real life? Okay. It no, be I awesome actually do talk it. sometimes. <laughs> okay. What is the Palio di Siena? Who has a short, concise, correct answer? What about Angela? Do you? Okay. What, what would you say if you were going to explain it to a relative or a friend? Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Do they wear saddles? Do they wear colored tights? Yes. Should we laugh at that when we see it? No. It is a part of their history and culture, and they're very proud of it. And to them, it's not funny. Neither is it funny to us. Okay. Which of the following Contrada names is the real one out of all five of these? Uh, let's start with Ashley. There. Continue. What did I just, what did I just do? She's not here. How about we go with Claire? I was going to go with, let's start in the front with Claire. Um, why? No. Eagle? Eagle is real. Aquila. Eagle is real. Lion sounds real. I can't believe someone chose snail over lion, but they did. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Alexis, you are sitting where Ashley usually sits. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's my bad. Okay, Palio Siena, it's just a show put on for tourists, right, Trista? False. It's not a show just put on for tourists. It's real. It's hundreds of years old, and they're very fiercely proud of it. Okay, the, the arch rival of Siena, according to Luca Bonomi, Alexis. Firenze. You're going to have to pretend that you do not like Florence when we get to see it. Before then and after then, you can love it. All right. You ready for this, Tatum? Duomo di Siena, an example of what textual style? The most correct answer. Who knew this one? According to the article, Angela, what'd you put? Gotico Italiano. Nello stile gotico Italiano. Italian Gotham. Did I skip over Claire? No, you answered one. Lexi. The plague is the reason that the Duomo building and renovations in the 1300s stopped. The Black Plague. Uh, let's see. Did you guys, I was going to have a question that said, why were they building? Why were they trying to increase the size of the Duomo in the 1300s? Did anybody read up on that? I believe that was in one of the articles. Why were they remodeling the Duomo? Do, do any of you guys know? Brittany? Amy? Sarah? What was their reasoning for renovating in the 1300s? Because they wanted to? They did want to, but why did they want to? They wanted to have the hugest cathedral in all of Europe. And they would have had they succeeded. But guess what happened? The plague came, and 50 to 60% of the city died. Oops, was that a question? That's okay. You've already taken it. And they stopped. And so, therefore, now there are two walls that don't have any Duomo inside of them that we'll see, which is awesome. And you can climb on top of one of them and look out and see everything. Oh, I'm going to show you some pictures. Remind me to show you pictures and video of the cooking class. Just to get you guys all jazzed about that. Okay. What covers the floor of the Duomo di Siena? Let's ask Sarah. Marble? Yes, marble, but more specifically, what Do marble... I get half credit for that? What's that? Do I get half credit for saying marble? You know what? You would get half credit, but I'm looking for marble, intricate marble drawings, paintings, artwork. Really intense artwork. Okay, did you guys get that right? You guys get that right? Yeah, you, you can get half credit. 
Because it is marble. I mean, it's not untrue that it's marble. It's covered with marble. Basilica di San Domenico houses the remains of which saint? Santa Catarina. Certo. Santa Catarina. Okay, Mackenzie. When and in which battle did Siena defeat Florence? Uh, Monteperti, is that how you say it? Montaperti. Very good. Yes. Montaperti nell'anno 1260, 1260. That's 1260 in Italian. Montaperti. They are still very <laughs> proud of being Florence. Yeah, that was a long time ago, but in terms of Italian history, they're still very proud of it. Okay, two of Siena's most famous <coughs> dolci, Brittany. Oh, you're muted. Maybe type it. Yes, most famous sweets. You could just give us the letter. The cappuccino gelato and pigeon spleen. Even though that sounds outrageous, those are actually <coughs> real things. Unfortunately, they that's not what I was getting at. I was getting at C, Ricciarelli cookies and panforte cake. I ate, what kind of spleen was it? It was a small rodent-like animal when I was in Siena. Cappuccino gelato and pigeon spleen. Siena is not most famous for those sweets, but I believe you might encounter one of those two things in your experience in Italy. Ricciarelli are delicious. Were you guys there on that day when Luca was spraying O de Ricciarelli around the classroom? <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> Smells good. Hey, uh, okay, Amy, can you? I don't know if we can hear you. Maybe we can't. What What's the name of the oldest bank in the world, and how old is it? Monte dei Paschi. Very good. Sorry, I couldn't see you type in there. Monte dei Paschi, 1472. How old is your bank? What's the oldest bank in the United States? Wells Fargo, 1870 something. Pretty impressive. All right, what kind of world famous wine is produced near Siena? I do not expect you to know this from experience, personal experience, but rather the reading. Who, who got this one right? Who's seen Silence of the Lambs? Tatum? Chianti, yes, very good. Chianti, never watch Silence of the Lambs. There's a line in there about Chianti and fava beans. Cos'è la via francigena? Chissà la risposta, tranne... Genessa non può rispondere, Elise? Via Francigena. No? Oh, you can answer the next question. The Via Francigena. Do you remember when Luca described what Via Francigena? Did anybody get this one right? Who knows they got this one right? Let's just... Yeah, it was a pilgrimage and it came from France and it passed through Siena. So something along those lines. It was a road for pilgrims and Siena was on it. Something like that. Okay. And what vegetable did you say, Elise, should serve as your guide? Una cipolla! Dovresti essere, dovresti vestirti come una cipolla. Le cipolle puzza, ma servono come buon esempio per vestirsi. Okay. And what do we mean by that? Does that mean you should smell all the time? Layers. Layers. Okay, not a giant, huge, puffy jacket, although if it gets really cold. But layers, so you can take them on and off. Okay. 
It is morally wrong not to shower every day, and people who don't are lesser people. Am I lying or telling the truth? <laughs> I am lying. That's a false statement. It's not morally wrong. It's just different, possibly even healthier for your skin. So we do not look down upon people who don't shower every day or two times a day. What's an Okay, who was here when... Aaron Rose spoke, what is an essential sentiment to constantly shower on your host families? Gratitudine. Di sempre grazie. Ti ringrazio. Ti ringraziamo. Per la cama, per il cibo. Per non lasciarci toccare il frigorifero. Oops, I just gave away the answer. What's the most sacred or personal part of an Italian home which you should never ever mess with? The refrigerator. Happen. Il frigo. Okay. Hopefully uh, you guys feel good about that. I tried to just put really important stuff on the quiz rather than obscure trivia. So we will count up those answers. Any questions on the quiz? Subject and contents of the quiz. Okay. I have recorded your answers, and hopefully if you put your name down, I have your name this time. Online quizzes are kind of new. Forgive me. Keep that up. All right, what should we do? Very important that... Okay, we did that. Oh, I have got an Italian lesson that... Looks awesome that I wanted to give to you. Mm. Mm. Here we go. How are your Italian classes going? Is anybody reconsidering going to Italy since you've been in the Italian course? No. Italian is easy, right? Am I right? It's not easy? I think it's the easiest language to learn. Oh, really? Is it your teacher? Tougher teacher? Hmm. Meet Hain and see. How to talk to Italians. Here, let me do this. So you guys can see, I'm going to share this. Can you guys see that keynote presentation? Now? <laughs> now you can. Okay, good. Look at this beautiful keynote template. It's called Venezia. How do you say my name is in Italian? This is like day one stuff in 101. Let's hear somebody who is not yet enrolled in Italian. Tell me what your name is in Italian. Who's brave? It's this right here. Io mi chiamo. You can say io sono as well. So how would you introduce yourself? Chelsea on day one. To, to your host family, yeah. Io mi chiamo. C-H is a hard K. Io mi chiamo Chelsea. And they will look at your name and they'll say, Chelsea? And you'll say, no, Chelsea. Very good. Io mi chiamo. Or io sono. Or, I don't know, how else do you say? Sono. Sono Brent. Sono professore Barson. What is your name? Okay. If okay, your host mom. Your host mom says or you introduce yourself to your host mom and then you want to know what her name is. Which one did you choose? Come si chiama lei? Yes, formal because you're not best friends yet. Maybe by the end if she gives you permission you can start using two with each other, but you would say Come si chiama lei? with your friends, with little children in the house, so get people younger than you, you're probably safe to say, come ti chiami tu, and you don't even have to use the two. Come ti chiami, 
Come si chiama? If it is formal, come ti chiami? All right. See, I told you it's the easiest language ever. Questions on this? Uh, let's see, no pronunciation quirks on this. CH, always hard. CH is never soft. Okay, some vowels, just C, just G, when followed by a vowel, are soft. Okay. Come ti chiami? Io mi chiamo Chelsea. Ah, piacere. Io sono Brent. Piacere. My pleasure. All right, who wants to tackle? Tackle the second sentence for me. Let's see, uh, Elise. Mi fa gran piacere conoscerla. You would say that to one of your instructors on the first day, or your host dad, maybe. Or the president of Monte dei Paschi Bank. Mi fa gran piacere conoscerla. Now, in the olden days, they used to use voi on a single person. Your multiple majesty. <laughs> Mi fa gran piacere conoscervi. Mi fa gran piacere conoscerti. Is it logical to you that you'd simply change the ending depending on whether you're talking to a tu or a lei? Is it confusing to you that lei means you, formal, and it also means she? How do you tell the difference when it's written? Can't, it's hard when you're spoken. You have to just take the context when you're speaking. But when it's written, what's the difference between lei and lei? Capital L. Capital L, lei, is you. And lei is lower for she. Very good. Trista, come stai? Come vanno le classi? How are your classes going? Come l'insegnante del tuo corso di preparazione per andare in Italia? That was a trick question. I said, how is the instructor in your Italian prep course? <laughs> you don't have to answer. Come va? How is it going? How goes it? Or how are you? I rarely heard come va. I heard come sta, come sta all the time. Ask how are, how is the person? Okay, these good, you good with these? these? This is also pretty basic stuff that you should know. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Angela, come stai? Bene. Mi fa piacere sentirlo. Morgan Allison, come stai? C E is c'è. Non c'è male. Or more to say things are going very bad. Oh, molto male. Mi dispiace. Cosa c'è? You'll learn what that means. Uh, Kim. Kim Aymond. Come stai? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> molto bene. Benissimo. Mi fa piacere sentirlo. All right, who, which one of you is just getting by? Because it's finals. I'm not going to Morgan Mackey. Mackay. That's how they say. Come stai? Si tira avanti. Si tira avanti. I am barely scraping by. I'm pulling ahead. Si tira avanti. All right, very good. This isn't a language class, I realize. But guess what? Everybody speaks Italian in Italy. And it helps if you know it. Okay. Let's see. Okay, do you guys want to know what the cookies looks like? Do you want to know what Sienna looks like through the lens of my iPhone? What's this? Let's do... 
That's a New York trip. Should have. I had this pulled up and then I messed it up. City Davanti. Oh, yeah. Those are. Yep. Those will work. Oh, you know what's cool about Italy is they grow olives there. And let's see. There we go. This looks like Siena. I saw Lamborghini when I went to Italy. <laughs> Hang on. Let me let these guys see this. You guys cannot see I photo, can you? There you go. Now it's funny when I say I saw a Lamborghini in Italy. <laughs> Ooh. Food never looks good when you photograph it, but there was this giant platter of meat. Okay, so when I when they sent me to Italy on a pre-trip last November, I met up with your religion teacher that you're going to have, and he lives out in the countryside south of Rome. On like he lives in a farmhouse, and there's olive groves, and they were getting the olives off the trees. I'll show you how that works. But he took us to this little family-run restaurant, and they brought out just platters, just huge platters, like. These are potatoes, right? So that gives you a sense of how big these sausages and this bacon. Check out that bacon. Pretty sure that's 95% grasso. Means fat. But it was really, really good. Uh, I don't know if this is all Rome stuff. So let's go down to Siena. And I want to show you the cooking class. I think this might have been the first picture I took. In Siena, this is looking over the city wall. There's the wall right there. This is right near uh, the Dante Alighieri. Duomo di Siena, what architectural style? Everybody in unison. Italian Gothic. Very good. Everything looked like this in Siena. Medieval. There I am. I should probably. <laughs> Let's show you something interesting. We were going to show you the cooking class. You're not interested in my kids playing in the snow. Okay, here is the machine that shakes the olives off the tree. It's like two rakes. Two clapping rakes. That's pretty much how they shake the olives off the tree. Yeah, look what's on the ground. Giant blankets. And then they gather them all up. And they're stepping on them. And they're going to be in your bottle of olive oil. You know what's amazing about your religion teacher? He's Italian, but his wife and kids are American. And they lived in America until not too long ago. His kids had lived there for s seven months when I got there, and they were already speaking Italian. It's little friends. It's amazing. Like, they have good accents. It was totally amazing. Where is the cooking class? Okay, this is the view from the top of the Torre di Mangia. No, that's not. I believe this is. Oh, sorry about the wind noise. Anyway, that's where you're going. We can't see it, Brother Bryson. Fonte Gaia. Look, a shell. Conchiglia. I keep getting distracted from the cooking course footage. There it is. Janessa might be in this footage. There you are. That's my cousin Todd. We went together to Italy last November. There's Enzo. Enzo will probably be your Italian teacher. 
is Nando, the chef. Everybody gets to cook. Everybody gets to chop. Even I got to chop up the pork for our little pork in Boltini. Pretty awesome. Are you guys totally excited about the cooking class? It's pretty amazing. Handmade pasta. That's right. He only speaks Italian, and then there were, is there always I don't know if there's always a translator or not? Okay. Yeah. No, that's good though. <laughs> Makes it tr tricky though when you're doing things you've never done before if the instructions are in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who's that nerd talking in the background? Anyway, it's a full, it's a legit kitchen. And that's the dessert we made. This orange stuff, persimmon. This is cream. So good. So good. Can you guys see this on Google? Hang out. No, okay. we can't. We haven't been seeing it. For what? Really? Yeah, the, just the last video. What the heck happened? Yeah, let me show you the dessert because you got to see that. Oh, Sarah was typing. We can't see the things you are showing. <laughs> Sorry. I, I need a, like a ring count or something. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. Can you see this? You guys know what persimmons are? It's a fruit slash vegetable that only old people like here, but they love it in Italy. They do. They're orange tomatoes. <laughs> but you put them... Hey, look, there's that one girl. Cora. Yes. What do you think? Do you want to go here? This is non-photoshopped. I took this with my own iPhone. This is from the top of the Duomo. This is from the top of one of those extra walls that they built in the 1300s, but then everybody died, and so they couldn't finish it. The walls are still there, and now it is a lookout. Oh, here's... Here are the involtini. Like giant raviolis with pork in the middle, and then you would cook them. Wow, I'm getting hungry. Those were really good. Sorry about the vertical video. Unedited. Okay. The rest of that is not relevant to this discussion. Could you see that, Mackenzie? See those photos? Yeah. Good. Okay, just a couple more things. Well, that's good because we have 10 more minutes. I wanted to go over the Rick Steves article. Did any of you guys read that? The uh, Avoiding Being the Ugly American. So if you guys will get on, what was that, day five, day six, and follow the Rick Steves Ugly American article link. just want to go over a couple things. I really like the way that Rick Steves puts this. The term Ugly American is kind of, kind of extreme. It's not very nice. But I think the people that it applies to, it is deserving because a lot of times, I notice this on my mission, that a lot of my companions... They did not have a respect for the Italian culture. It was like it was, it was different, and therefore it was bad. And I want, I, I'm not going to try to understand it. I'm going to try to impose my, my beliefs, what I know is right, on these people who are backwards. That's the wrong attitude to have when you go into a foreign country.
here because guess what? They do a lot of things right. So I like this paragraph right here. Europe sees two kinds of travelers, those who view Europe through air-conditioned bus windows, socializing with their noisy American friends, and those who are taking a vacation from America, immersing themselves in different cultures, experiencing different people and lifestyles, and broadening their perspectives. I can't stress this enough. When you go to Italy, you will not be on vacation. You will be Italian. You need to be Italian. Okay? It's going to be it's going to be better than a vacation. Because you're going to be in Italy being just soaking in everything. You're not just going to be there for three days and then go on to the next city. You're going to be living there. So you're not on vacation. You are a Sienese. You are a member of the community. And in fact, we're going to be Roman citizens as well because we're going to be there so long. Okay. Many Americans' trips suffer because they're treated like ugly Americans because they <laughs> act that way. Okay. The good thing is that Italians will judge you as an individual. They might say, I don't like your president. President Obama is not good. Non è buono. Non è bravo, Presidente Obama. Ha fatto molte cose bruttissime. They probably won't say that. They probably like Obama. They would have said that about Bush. Presidente Bush non mi piace molto. For me, Bush is a big problem. He says that in Okay. The ugly American criticizes strange customs and cultural differences and doesn't try to understand. Okay. Doesn't understand the, that only a Hindu knows the value of India's sacred cows, and only a devout Spanish Catholic appreciates the true worth of his town's patrons. Okay, I will admit, when you go to La Basilica di San Domenico and you see the relics of Santa Catarina, the heads there, okay, the thumbs there, that is different. Okay, but to them it's sacred. It's important. And they're used to it. It's been there for six or seven hundred years, so it's not like it's a new thing. To you, it's new. To them, it's been around. It's accepted. It is a part of their faith. It's a part of their religion. Okay. The ugly American demands to find America in Europe. He throws a fit if the air conditioning is down. He insists on OJ and eggs for breakfast, long beds, English menus, punctuality in, in Italy, and cold beer in England. He measures Europe with an American yardstick. That never works. Things are always a little bit hotter than you're probably used to, or colder than you're probably used to. And it's best, as Aaron Rose said, just to layer up when it gets cold and deal with it when it's hot. Because, remember, no flip-flops all the time. Okay, you guys won't have any problem communicating with the natives. You guys will be fluent by the time you arrive. Yeah, the classic ugly American question overseas is, how much is that in real money? AKA dollars, AKA the world currency. Guess what? Euros are, there's more countries that have the euro, so there. So there, hypothetical ugly American. A thoughtful American, i.e. you guys, you will seek out Italian styles of living and you are generally, genuinely interested in the people and the cultures you visit. I think that you already are genuinely interested, or otherwise you would not have signed up to live in Italy for a semester, but being genuinely interested is important. People can feel it. People are genuinely interested in you. They'll ask you questions, and you should ask them questions about their, the way they do things. You want to learn by trying things, you will get plenty of opportunities to learn by trying. Try to understand difference. Yeah, there's a lot of things that may appear inefficient to you in Italy. There are some things that, to my mind, still are less efficient in Italy than in America, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're better, per se. He gives the example here of you pay for your coffee at one counter, then you have to go to another counter far away to pick it up. But when you think about how that works, you know, you're handling money. The guy who handles your money isn't the same one that handles your coffee. So that actually makes sense. Okay. Janessa, were you the one that mentioned that you could always tell the Americans because they were like really loud, these big boisterous groups? Which is really funny to me because Italians, when they speak, are very voluminous, right? Yeah. And maybe... <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah, it's hard to describe. Just uh, be... know your surroundings. 
know your surroundings. All right. You guys won't have the language barrier so much. Okay, I want you to read through the rest of this. Oh, he recommends that you go to a church. We will be going to churches. We'll be looking at art in the churches, but it might not be a bad idea to go to una messa. Una messa di mezzanotte, maybe. Midnight mass. How do they do things? Are the, are the masses held in Italian? Are they held in Latin? What can we learn from them? What do they do well? I personally like the way the scene sounds. I like how they have stained glass that lets in natural light instead of fluorescent light. They do things well. Rooting for your team. You guys, okay, no matter, whatever contrada you end up living in, you will probably end up being honorary fans. Your family will make sure of that. Okay? And as you heard, there are enemy contradas and there are allied contradas. You should never speak well of an enemy contrada and never speak ill of an ally, or especially the contrada in which you dwell. Okay, get off the tourist track. We are going to be getting off the tourist track. In, we're going to be on the tourist track enough in Rome, but I also want to take you guys to places that are off the beaten track, because that's really what it's all about. That's what the citizens see. Okay, you can read over this yourself. If you haven't read over it yet, please read the whole thing. What else I need to tell you today? Oh, yeah, I think we mentioned this before, but uh, always have a little pouch full of euros so that you can use the restroom when we're out and about visiting. Uh, museums wouldn't be a problem, but when we're out and about walking the streets, it's kind of a shocker to people that got a the public restroom. The answer is yes. Yes, you do. Also, I thought that was interesting. In this book, it talks about Italian food. And we always talk about Italian food. If we want Italian food, we go to the Olive Garden. Because when you're here, you're family. There's no such thing as Italian food. Did you know that? Why would I say it's such a preposterous thing? There's no such thing as Italian food. There's Venetian food. There's Roman cuisine. There's Sienese cuisine. But there's nothing that is generically Italian for every province. They're fiercely proud of their Cucina Toscana, right? Cucina Siciliana. Sicilian food is about as different as you can get from Lombardese food, Milan in the north of Italy, as Mexican food is from German food. Totally different. Bland, mild at the top, but delicious, and spicy, hot. Oh, actually, Mexican Spanish at the bottom, which makes sense. Okay. Lots of awesome things to find out about Italy. I can't wait for you guys to learn it all in context. And I can't wait to hear about your presentation topic next week when we all meet in person except for two people and we will find out who's going to be rooming with who and we'll have a good time and we will break for the summer before we meet in uh, Rome. Do you believe that? It's coming to an end. Any last minute questions before we break tonight? I remember, oh, don't forget to come up here and try to help me find your name on last week's quiz. Are we done taking quizzes, or do we have any more? That's the last quiz. Your final exam will be the presentation. Perfect. Okay. Two quizzes, a presentation, and attendance will probably all come into play. Thanks, Amy. Because I all right. Let's see. Sarah, I got yours. Amy, I got yours. Brittany, I wrote down yours. Mackenzie, did I get your quiz response? Uh, you should have. I mean, today did we? We didn't talk about it today, did we? Uh. -uh. What? Uh, what's your Italian class status? What did you type in for your Italian class? You did you say online sources, Italian grammar textbook? I said Rosetta Stone. You said Rosetta Stone, okay. Rosetta Stone levels one, two, three, and four, mostly audio and online? I think I just said Rosetta oh. Stone. Oh, okay, that's that's McKenna, correct. sorry. You just said Rosetta Stone. 
Yeah. I might have put your name on someone else's. Pimsler. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep keep searching. I will figure out. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll email you if I need more info. Okay, Mackenzie. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. See you guys. All right. Bye. I'm ending the broadcast.